Now obviously, this channel is all about Linux, so I don't really get an opportunity to talk about retro gaming all that often, because let's face it, there's a lot of YouTubers out there and they're doing a great job. But any time that retro gaming and Linux intersect in any kind of way to where I can cover retro games, I definitely am always up for creating a video to demonstrate that. And RetroPie is my favorite Linux distribution. It's not just a Linux distribution. I mean, it's also basically an application, but it is primarily a Linux distribution for the Raspberry Pi that allows you to turn your Pi into a gaming powerhouse for retro classic games. But the only problem though is that some games are, you know, a little hard to get to run. Anything newer than the 90s pretty much chokes on a Raspberry Pi. Now, not a lot of people know this, but you can actually set up RetroPie on an x86 PC. And with such a processor, even on an older PC, you're going to be able to run a lot of games that the Raspberry Pi would normally choke on. So I decided to record a video that outlines the process of setting up RetroPie on an x86 PC. Actually, it's this laptop right here is the one that I'm going to be installing it on. And I've already done it. I've already recorded the video. I thought I could record a better intro, so here it is. And I have my controller right here. This is the controller that I'm using. This is a Buffalo branded controller. It's in the links below. You can find a link to the controllers that I've used. And this is Linux compatible, shaped like a Super Nintendo controller. And you don't really need an expensive computer. I do recommend that you have one that has an HDMI port. It could be an old computer as long as it has an HDMI port. Or if you don't actually plan on hooking it up to a monitor, you don't even need that either. And then you just basically need an install of Linux. Now, in my case, I'm going to be installing RetroPie on Pop! OS, which is based on Ubuntu. So if you're using Ubuntu proper, you can also use that as well. I'll show you the process and then I'll show you some gameplay footage. So let's go ahead and dive right into creating a retro gaming PC setup on an x86 computer. Okay, so here you are seeing my laptop. This laptop is currently running Pop! OS 1904, which you can see here. I have a terminal window open. I decided to make it full screen. And again, 1904, it tells you that right here. I have this informational display on my terminal every time I open a terminal. And from here, you can actually see some of the specs of this particular machine. And to be completely honest, I mean, this is a very good machine. It's a Core i5, so yeah, it could be better. But, you know, when it comes to RetroPie, this machine is definitely overkill. So we can see how much memory I have. I have about 16 gigs here. Some of that's reserved. I have an Intel UHD Graphics 620. And my Intel Core i5-8250U is rated at 3.4 gigahertz. I believe that's with Turbo Boost. So enough of that. What we actually need to do first, and I'm going to clear the screen, is make sure that we are completely up to date. If you're trying to play games on a Linux computer and you have updates and you haven't rebooted or, you know, basically you're trying to install RetroPie and you don't have your updates installed, you might actually experience problems. So the first thing you're going to want to do is sudo apt update. That's going to update the package cache. Yours will probably look different because I have other repositories on my machine. It's telling me that four packages can be upgraded. So next I'm going to do sudo apt dist upgrade and that's going to install all the latest updates. So I'll press enter. It's going to give me a preview of everything that it wants to update. So basically the Google Chrome browser and some libraries here. So actually nothing that pertains to RetroPie. But again, it's a good idea to have everything up to date. So I'll just go ahead and accept the defaults and press enter. All right, so we're completely up to date. I'll clear the screen. Now at this point, we're going to need some prerequisite packages to install RetroPie. So we're not actually gonna install RetroPie just yet. We just have a few things to install first. Because I'm lazy, I'm just gonna go ahead and paste the command in here to the terminal. 
So you could pause the screen if you need to, but basically we're installing four packages. We're going to install Git, Dialog, Onzip, and XML Starlet, as you see right here. And I'm just basically stealing this off the RetroPie documentation. But, you know, here we go. These are the packages that we need. And I'll press Enter. And a couple of those are probably already installed, but that was quick. Git was already installed because I use that basically pretty much every day. So we have the prerequisite packages that we need for RetroPie. So we're actually in good shape to get started. Now, what I like to do is make a directory called git. The reason I do this is because I often will have a dedicated folder for git repositories because sometimes there's upstream projects that I want to contribute to or tools that I'd like to download. So I basically put all of my favorite repositories under this one folder. I didn't already have this folder on this laptop yet because I mainly use a different machine for that purpose, but having a central place to download Git repositories, that's not a bad idea. So I'll go ahead and change directory into that directory. And I'm now in the Git directory, which is in my home directory. So PWD, you can see where I'm at. So next we need to download the RetroPie setup script. And again, because I'm lazy, I'll just go ahead and paste it in there and go ahead and pause this screen if you need to, but basically we are going to clone this script. And this is going to download it to our git directory in a subdirectory, so I'll press enter. And that was really quick. So what did, exactly did that do for us? So I'll list the storage here, and you can see that we have a new directory that was not there before. We have RetroPie setup. Inside that directory, we have a bunch of things, but more importantly, we have the RetroPie setup script itself, which is actually what we're going to be running. So now we're ready to run the setup script itself. So again, I'll paste in this command right here. So basically what we're going to do is use sudo because we need root privileges to run this script. And the dot forward slash is just going to run that script in that directory. We need to be in the directory that that script file is stored in, which you saw me change directory into there in a previous step. So I'm ready to go. I'll press enter. And then once we start the setup script, we get this disclaimer, which you might be tempted to just immediately hit OK and bypass it. But this is a very important disclaimer. It's basically warning you not to sell RetroPie images with ROMs and things like that because that is a very horrible thing to do. A lot of people do this. They try to make money off of this. They're not licensed for these ROMs. And while some people might think big deal, it's important to keep in mind that RetroPie is a passion project. And if this happens too often, it's always possible that Nintendo or some bigger company could crack down on them. So if you are planning on selling RetroPie boxes for profit, shame on you. But I'm sure none of my viewers would be wanting to do that. I just wanted to mention this in case you were wondering why we have this disclaimer here. But as long as you're using this for personal use, there really shouldn't be a problem. So I'll press enter. And what's interesting here is it just confirms the distribution that I'm running. And it also tells me the most recent commit. Now, as you can see, the most recent commit was less than 24 hours ago, which just goes to show you that the RetroPie project is a thriving project. So, of course, if you have any talents, coding or anything, feel free to just join the project and help them out. I'm sure they would appreciate that. For our purposes here, we're going to actually use the basic install, which is the very first option. So I'll press enter. Just says, are you sure you want to do a basic install, which will install all packages from the core and main package section? So yes, I do want to do that. So I just hit the left arrow over to yes, and then I press enter. Okay, so it looks like RetroPie is completely set up. Now, since I want to also run a PSP game, I'm going to need to install that because that doesn't come default. So that also gives me an opportunity to show you guys how you manage optional packages. So I'm gonna go down here to manage packages, and then I'm gonna go down to manage optional packages. 
And then I'm going to find the emulator or core that I want to add. And there's a bunch here to choose from. I'm actually going to add this one right here for PSP. And then I'll press enter. Install from source. That's pretty much my only option. So I'll press enter again. So the PSP plugin was installed. So I could simply just go over here to go back, back again, again, and then exit. At this point, RetroPie should be installed. So you should see it in your application menu. Since I'm running GNOME, I can hit super. I can start typing RPI, and we can see that it is present right here. Now, before I go there though, there is just one more thing that I want to mention. You're going to need ROMs, otherwise you're really not gonna have anything to play. Now, I know this question is going to come up in the comments, but just basically to make sure everybody knows, I can't give you links to ROMs, so, if you do ask a question in the comments asking for that, I can't help you because it's a legal gray area. Honestly, I believe in fair use, so I see no shame in it whatsoever, but it's just one of those things I can't provide. Now, as far as where you can get those things, you know, like I said, I can't tell you, but if you're good at Googling or checking through Reddit, just search Google, search Reddit, there's a possibility that you might find something interesting. Now just look how fast that actually launched. It's orders of magnitude faster than it is on a Raspberry Pi. So already I'm seeing a speed increase. But let's play some games and actually see how that performs. Now on my end, off camera, I basically added all of my ROMs to my installation here. So I actually have quite a few. Basically all I had to do was just add my ROMs inside this folder, RetroPie. That folder did not exist until I installed RetroPie. And inside there, we have folders for each of the individual cores or emulators here. And then I simply just add the games to their respective folders. So for example, NES, I added all my games in here. Same with SNES, and so on. Once you do that, and you launch RetroPie, as long as you added those games before you launched RetroPie, they should be shown here. Only the emulators you have games for will actually show up here. So if you did that in the reverse, if for example, you added the games after, you just simply press start, go down to quit, and then you go down to restart emulation station and that will restart this. You know, it'll actually see the games the next time it starts up. I had a problem with the screen recorder, and normally you would see that the configure your controller screen would be the first thing you'd see, but I've already gone through that. But that's probably what you're seeing as a prompt to configure your controller, so I'm gonna go ahead and simulate that right now. I'll just press start and go down to configure input, and say yes. So this is actually what you'll see the very first time you start RetroPie. But before I do that, I do want to mention their documentation. It is awesome. So I'll switch to a different workspace here and bring up a browser. And then I'm here at retropie.org.uk slash docs. And their documentation is amazing. Of special interest to us is this emulator section. And if I scroll down, we can see all the emulators that RetroPie supports. And if we click on a system that we basically want to run, we scroll down, we see a legend that we can use to map our controller. So this is awesome. If you have a gamepad that is modeled after a specific retro game console, like mine is modeled after the Super Nintendo, so this article right here is going to be the one that I will follow. Actually, I have it memorized, so I won't be following anything. But if you are, for example, using a gamepad that is modeled after, let's say, a Genesis slash Mega Drive controller, then you'll also see something similar here, where it's going to give you the button layout for that controller. So if you have something that looks like the three-button controller, here you go. 
If you have the six button gamepad, there you go. It basically tells you where each of the RetroPie buttons corresponds to the buttons on the gamepad so that your controller will work with the games and give you the most authentic experience. So back to RetroPie. So just like it says, I'm going to hold down a button to configure the controller. And then I'm going to press the buttons accordingly to configure it. My controller is just a simple six button gamepad, so I don't actually have all the buttons that it's going to prompt me for. But that's okay because we can actually skip any buttons we don't want to configure. So up, down, left, right, it's pretty standard. Start, select, and then we have the four face buttons and it's telling us in which direction they are, even kind of giving us a little picture here. So if you have a Super Nintendo styled controller like I do, then it's pretty much going to be very easy. So go ahead and press these buttons. And then L and R. And here's where I get to a point where I've run out of buttons on the gamepad. Because if you have something like a PS4 controller or something with, con with a comparable number of buttons, then you'll basically have additional buttons here you can configure. But since I don't and I've run out of buttons, I can hold down any button to skip and not configure that particular item, which is what I'm going to do for most of the remaining options here. So I'm just holding down a button each time and releasing. And then for hotkey enable, we don't want to skip that. It's recommended that you have this be a dedicated button on your controller. But if you're like me and you've run out of buttons, then you can simply default to select. And press OK. And I'll press the B button to go back. And we're good to go. So I'm going to show off a few games here, guys. I'm going to first of all start with Super Nintendo. This is easy and will run on anything. So I'll basically choose a few easy games to get us started. And I'll go down to Super Mario World Classic. Okay, let's try Sega Genesis, also known as the Mega Drive, which is shown as the Mega Drive here. You can actually configure the logo there, but I'm not going to get into that. That's in the documentation. I'm just going to go in the reverse here, go down, then up to Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Now they're my favorites. In case you didn't know, it's made by Sega. They make that glaringly obvious, don't they? Start a new game. And let's see if I'm still any decent at this game. So, Chaos Emerald stolen. Let's see if we can get one of them back at least in this video. Here goes nothing. Am I awake enough? That is the question. Oh, <laughs> 
There we go. Chaos Emerald. Yay! Okay, that's easy. All that stuff can be handled on the actual Raspberry Pi. Let's try something a little bit more challenging. I'm gonna go up to, let's see, go to Arcade, and we'll go to Ultimate MK3. This handles generally pretty well on the Raspberry Pi. Some misses here and there, but generally it's fine. Let's see what happens though when we go to play this on x86. I always love this finishing move. I blow up the world and then everything's still fine. There's still a world for the next match, whatever. Okay, so next I'm gonna try Nintendo 64. I have quite a few games here, so what I'm gonna do is actually choose The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. And what I'm gonna do is mute the audio because we all know how Nintendo is with uh, trying to claim ownership over videos that show their footage, which I never agreed with. This didn't work well for me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it another shot, though, and see if I can get the resolution fixed. You'll see what I mean in a minute. All right, so we basically have this little tiny window here in the bottom left corner. And you're supposed to use select and X to actually get to the menu here but it's not working for me but you know that's just one of those things I'm gonna to have to go ahead and configure this I'm sure there's an easy way to fix the resolution but um, I'll just look at the documentation and see if I can get that going so let's try something else let's go over to PSP I have several games here let's check out Final Fantasy I always like to go with the monk and then we'll just do auto name that'll work hmm Zock that's interesting yes skip the intro and here we are at the very beginning of Final Fantasy. This game has been given a facelift, but I'm just going to go ahead and walk around and get into a battle. Probably not the highest performing game I could test, but I only have RPGs mainly, so I'm not going to really be able to test much on the PSP side right now. I'm just going to go ahead and just get rid of these goblins. They gotta raise the roof when they win a battle. Anyway, exit out of this. Star Ocean, Second Evolution, one of my favorite games. Let's check this one out. This one is a good test because it actually does have trouble on a Raspberry Pi. So we're gonna see if it's any better on this than it would be on the Raspberry Pi. So I'll skip the intro, start a new game. And I already went through this test on the System76 Gazelle review, but this is a, you know, not as, not as powerful of a laptop here. So this is still a pretty good test. So basically, I'm just going to go to the very first forest because on a Raspberry Pi, it will choke on the very first battle. You'll hear it in the music. It'll just start skipping. And here's the very first battle, another place that it'll skip on the Raspberry Pi, and let's see what happens. 
We can handle this. While he's using his gun, this would have definitely have uh, given the Raspberry Pi a workout. Not even sure why. That was easier than I thought. But there you go. Seems to be working great. So there you go. This is a very fun video to record. I love RetroPie. It's my favorite open source project, and it's always a pleasure to record a video about it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this too. And if there's any opportunity to create more RetroPie videos, I plan on doing that. So if that's something that you would like to see more of, then let me know in the comments below. Any specific topics you'd like me to cover, maybe I'll give that a shot. So hopefully that was as fun for you guys as it was for me. So stay tuned to my channel. I have more content coming very soon. A bunch of new content that I've filmed. I'm currently in the process of editing. So if you haven't already done so, subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.